Hello and welcome to this Power BI tutorial from Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and today I'm going to show you a super neat solution that you can replicate in your reports within 10 minutes. It is actually going to be three different solutions to the same problem, but you have to stay till the end to see all three of them. But before we jump into that, a quick word from today's video sponsor, the like and the subscribe buttons. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit both of them, so I will be able to create more content like this. Thanks, heaps. First of all, let's talk about the problem we are going to tackle today. I'm pretty sure that many of you had found yourself in a situation where you sliced and diced your report, drew some insights, but when it comes to present or share those findings with others, you have to double check that you selected the right stuff. Or show the audience the selection that you made. I have done that so many times. Additionally, it could be super useful for your report users to have some sort of a confirmation that they made the right selection and the numbers represented on the report page are the right and relevant numbers. Now that we have talked about the problem, let's head over to Power BI and see the first simple solution. For today's exercise, I created a simple sales report. The numbers on this page don't matter that much, so don't get too bogged down on the column chart. The most important bit is the slicer on the left, and of course the solution that we are going to prepare. I have created a customer hierarchy with three layers in it. We have standard Microsoft companies, A Datum, AdventureWorks, and Contoso. All three of them are further split into HQ or headquarters, and sub or subsidiaries or branches. Furthermore, HQs are split into cities and subs are split into stores. I consider this setup as a good representation of what you might also have in your report. Please keep in mind that while I'm going to talk about customers here, you may be able to replicate this for products, departments, cost centers, or anything where you might need to pick elements from different levels of the hierarchy. Also, I would very much prefer a drop-down version of the slicer because it takes up less space and quicker to render in the service. But for this exercise, I wanted to expand all levels so it will be easier to follow along. As I mentioned in the intro, I need to find a way to remind myself and my users about the selections made in a slicer. The quickest and easiest way to achieve this is to have three card visuals, the number of layers I have in the hierarchy, and add the selected value measure there. Let's write the first one together, and then I speed up the creation of the other two. Right click on my customers table, and select new measure. I'm going to call it selected customer name one. And as I said, we can use the built-in selected value dex measure to pick up the selection we have. Once we are done with that, let's add a card visual and place the measure into it. Hmm. We have blank by default because there is no selection made. Blank is not a super user-friendly expression. It is actually quite scary from an average user's perspective, but I'm going to leave it as it is for the time being. Let's quickly create our measures for name 2 and name 3 and then test all of them. When I select Adventure Works, the first card is going to tell me that I have selected Adventure Works. If I select Adventure Works Headquarter, the first card is going to show Adventure Works, and the second one is going to show Adventure Works Headquarter. And finally, if I select Tokyo, the result here is going to be exactly what I wanted to see. And it works with other selections as well.
and now is the right time to address the blank issue. In the selected value formula, we can add an alternate result. Meaning that when the code would return blank, it will return a different result or a piece of text. You would be tempted to add all customers, right? Unfortunately, with add a bit more complex DAX, there is no easy way to fix it. Why? Because selected value will also show blank if we have multiple values selected, but not all values selected. Let me show you. If I select Contoso and Adventure Works, it shows blank again. So the easiest fix would be adding multiple customers and that's it. Let me adjust the formula to include that line as well. Now it looks better. A couple of notes before we move over to the more advanced solutions. First, you could potentially mitigate the issue of multiple selection by not allowing your report users to select multiple items. However, I would consider that more of a band-aid rather than fixing the problem. In most real-life scenarios, users must have the option to select multiple items. Second, you can of course fix this issue with a bit more advanced DAX. However, for that simple solution, I did not want to introduce advanced DAX. We will cover that next. And third, while this is a solution to the problem, I think we can all agree that having three card visuals to show users their selection would be a waste of screen real estate. So how can we create a better solution to this problem? I'm glad you asked. Which one out of the next two solutions you like better will depend on your use case. I like both solutions and usually I let my report consumers pick the one that makes more sense to them in a given report. Before we look at the DAX side of it, let's have a look at the way how they behave. If I select store 4, both are going to indicate store 4. In case I select AdventureWorks Headquarter, both are going to show AdventureWorks Headquarter. And if my selection is Contoso, you guessed it right, they will show Contoso. However, if I select Sydney, and Melbourne, they will show different results. Same with AdventureWorks Sub and Contoso Headquarter or a Datum and AdventureWorks. And as final demo of how they behave, I'm going to select AdventureWorks Headquarter and expand my selection with store one. So now that you have seen the different results that they deliver, have a look at the DAX code. Let's start with the longer DAX code first. This is the one I called selected customer single measure. The reason behind this name is that if a single value is selected at any level, the measure is going to return that, while in case of multiple selection at any level, or any combination of layers, the code will return a multiple selection result. I usually use this code when I'm fairly confident that the interaction with the report will be at a single selection level with an occasional multi-select option. While it seems to be a long code, it's actually not that difficult to understand. Using a switch formula with a true statement, I start with identifying a single selection at the lowest layer in the hierarchy. This is where the end statement comes in handy. If it is not true, the formula goes to the next line, checking if there are filters at the lowest level, and if it is true, I just write multiple levels reselected. After that, copy pasting the same for name 2 and finally name 1. And if there is no selection whatsoever, I go with a no selection made comment. Of course, this last piece of text could very well be all customers selected. Once again, naming convention will depend on your use case. But what if we need to see all selection? In that case, I use a DEX code to grab all selected values and concatenate them with a comma. Here is the DEX. Don't underestimate this code purely because it is shorter than the first solution. 
In many cases, I believe it is actually much more powerful, especially when a report is being presented or exported as PPT or PDF. That way, a dynamic Power BI report can be consumed as a static PPT or PDF without losing details. In a real report, where a slicer is formatted as a drop-down slicer, that PDF would look something like this. I don't know about you, but I hate to remember things like that when I can find a way to add the information to the report page. And why do I love these two solutions? Easy. They won't take up as much screen real estate as having dedicated elements for all selection. Additionally, these combined measures can be used as dynamic report header. Meaning that I don't even have to create a card visual, just add a piece of string to the top left corner and report consumers will be able to quickly identify selection that they have made right on the top of the report page. I really like these tricks because they can create a much better user experience and help users, especially newcomers to Power BI, to feel more confident. The best part is that you can create something similar for your reports relatively quickly. It shouldn't take more than 5 to 10 minutes to replicate these DAX measures. And to make your lives easier, I add them to the blog post so you can just copy paste them. Check out the link down in the description below. And if you decide to replicate any of these methods, please let me know down in the comments below, along with any other suggestion or solution that you may found in Power BI to solve the same problem. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that the text wasn't too scary and you learned a solution that you can easily replicate in your reports. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to get notified when a new video is available. Stay tuned for more to come. See ya!